Dr Ian Duncan Smith, a former leader of the Conservative Party and someone who's spoken out against a lot of the lockdown restrictions over the last year. I can't believe we're doing this uh, in June 2021, uh, Sir Ian. But um, um, what what do we do about this? Because we're told one last heave. We were told by Matt Hancock we would be crying freedom as soon as the over 70s were vaccinated. Uh, we were told this would be irreversible. It was three weeks to flatten the curve. We've been told this again and again mm. and again. Um if we don't come out of lockdown on the 21st of June, there's nothing to stop us staying in some perpetual version in and out of lockdown until the end of time, is there? Well, that, of course, is the worry, Julie. Good morning. Um, my biggest fear at the moment is the more we delay, the less likelihood we are able to come out of this. We've got ourselves, I think, into a spiral, really, of fear. Um, I was looking at Public Health England's latest documents and they make it very clear that they have no evidence of a connection between increasing hospitalization uh, and serious illness uh, and this new variant, yeah. uh, because they said it's clear that the vaccines are working. And it's interesting if you listen to the language, particularly the moment on the BBC, but generally the language about this, they will talk about this being uh, vaccines, yes, but they're not completely proof. Well, of course, they're not completely proof. But what they do do, even one jab reduces the effectiveness of this variant and also reduces your likelihood of getting it in a way that takes you to hospital. And two jabs makes it very, very unlikely that yeah. you will uh, get it and go to hospital. I mean, very, very unlikely. And kind of saying, in for, the for, for people under the age of 70, certainly under the age of 50, it was already very, very unlikely. Yes, and if they get it, those who are under the, what I call the at-risk age groups, uh, then they're, if they get it, they will get it in a much milder form uh, than is the case for those older. And we were told once we'd got over the hump of two doses for all of those uh, who were in the vulnerable groups, then we would be clear to unlock because we had faith in the vaccine. What seems to be going on, I hear a lot of scientists, not Professor Gupta and co, but a lot of scientists, suddenly now talking about third wave, but making yeah. absolutely no reference to vaccines, uh, repeating the very same language we had before Christmas, but with no reference to vaccines, or at least a passing reference in which they kind of say, well, we're not sure about yeah. vaccines. And that's my worry now, is that we'll never be sure. And there is a very good yeah. forecast that says if we don't unlock now, we will hurtle into September, and then the scientists will all be saying, oh, the winter, you yes. mustn't unlock during the winter. And oh, I've, I've never had any doubt that we would be back being, even if we got rid of the masks this summer and social distancing, that we would be back in all of that this winter. Um, but this is this is the issue. I mean, if we don't do it now in the summer months when it, it's, you know, hospitals are not overwhelmed in, in terms of in ICU uh, by flu, um, there's lots of fear that actually we're going to be, you see, our hospitals overwhelmed by flu this coming uh, winter, uh, simply because people hadn't had flu last mm -hmm winter and we, people are going to have less uh, immunity to, 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 the, to the flu strains going around. We will see an increase in COVID cases in the autumn because this is a seasonal endemic virus now and we will see those cases go up. The question is whether those infections lead to mass hospitalizations or, or, or deaths. But instead of the government saying, right, we, we, we're, we're going to prepare for that, the preparation appears to be, from what Man Matt Hancock had to say in interviews over the weekend, the preparation seems to be that we will plan to go back to, to more versions of lockdown and limits on people's lives. And this is the thing. It is extraordinary how many people are saying it's just a few more weeks. We've come this far. It's just a few more weeks. But they all said that in January. The people who were screaming abuse at me in January when I said we shouldn't be going into a lockdown three because it's only for a few weeks why the vaccines rolled out. Why are you so selfish? It's June. Now, a lot of people are saying it's only a few more weeks and we're, we're living freely now anyway. We haven't got we're not in lockdown anyway. So what difference does it make? What do you say to those people? Well, it's very simple, I think, that um, and I keep making this argument, but the government doesn't answer it. What's happened to our balance of risks with our lives? Since this all broke, we've lost all balance. We have risk every day in our lives. We make decisions that yeah. are risky to us. You know, some people ride motorcycles. Uh, they're, they're much more risky than driving a car. Some people cross the roads uh, without going on the zebra crossing, but that's riskier, and people get hurt and killed doing it. But they take that decision. What's going on at the moment is we've now centered around one single risk to our lives. And that is the only thing that matters, yeah. not a thing. It's the only thing that matters. And my problem is 
whilst that attitude is the case, we're heading to zero COVID. Zero COVID is unachievable. Yes. We have to learn to live with this process and have some faith in the vaccine. Yes, some people will go to hospital. These things are happening. But, you know, most of those are people who haven't had the vaccine. Uh, the people who have had two doses of the vaccine are in a much, much stronger place, even those who've had one dose. So my, my real question is, when do we think we will ever return to the concept that we accept that risk exists? It's the balance of the risks. What about all those who haven't been able to get their health treatments in hospitals, yeah. the heart disease and the liver and diseases and the people with, um, with cancer? You know, um, they, I don't see the BBC and others putting their figures up every day for death. No. Their figures up for hospitalizations. See, we're getting this balance, I think, completely out of kilter. We've got the vaccines that allows us to get the balance of risk back. But what we're now doing is saying, well, we can't risk anything. And, that's and the I thing, have to say that's wrong. But this is the thing, isn't it? The vac That's as good as it gets. The vaccines are as good as it gets. No vaccine is 100% uh, effective. No vaccine is 100% safe. There, there's a balance of risks in everything. And, and, and yet, uniquely, we're expecting this vaccine to be 100%. 100% take up, 100% effective at 100% of the time. And no one ever expected that of the vaccines. And at the time when we thought they were going to be less effective with a lower take up rate than we've seen, I mean, extraordinary the take up we've seen and the effectiveness of this uh, of these vaccines. At that point, we were still promised that once it was rolled out to over 70s, we would be back to normal. And we're not. And that is the real worry. And it's not just about, you know, the, as you say, the collateral damage, the people who are not getting cancer treatments, not getting other treatments, uh, being ignored, the, the mental health issues, the, the, the damage to our relationships from the distancing. And the like. There is also a very crucial philosophical issue as well. That our relationship with the state has so fundamentally changed. Um, and I am I am more scared of people's shrug. Yeah. Well, now I'm not bothered attitude than I am of the virus, genuinely. Simply, and, 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 I, and I understand the threat of the virus. Um, it's because people just seem to think that it's OK to live in a free democratic society where the government can take away your freedoms on what is right now a whim, given the level of threat that we face, um, without, any, without any comeback, without any... Um, the vast majority of the media not criticising this. No opposition to speak of from the opposition benches, at least some from <clears> Tory <throat> backbenches. Um, and 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 just being able to just get away with it. And, and the people go, yes, OK, we are now in a situation where we've gone from we're allowed to do anything we want unless it's specifically stopped by the government for good reason to we can't do anything unless the government specifically tells us we can. That is a fundamental change in our relationship with the state. It is. And one of the problems with that is, uh, as somebody once said, you never rec you never understand that you've lost freedom until the day you need to exercise it. And these things are taken away with you bit by bit. And this is my biggest problem. You know, most of the public will probably say, well, I don't mind as long as, you know, we're going to be safe. Um, and that's the nature of this debate uh, is that COVID has become such a threat in people's eyes. Uh, and therefore they're worried and they will give up almost anything because they are being made to be very fearful of this threat, beyond rational fear too uh, now, particularly with the vaccines. My concern therefore is uh, all you have to do is put COVID on another restriction and you can have that restriction happily as a government and you won't necessarily give it back. Yeah. And there is genuine talk of locking down again over the winter uh, and my question is, well, we never locked down for flu and many people went to hospital and many people in these uh, winters and months often died, sadly, for everybody, of course. But we didn't lock down. Are we now going to lock down if flu hits us during the winter? Because this is going to be a case of will we be putting death numbers up on the television every day? What's going on now is that people have been made to be incredibly fearful uh, of the of the known unknown and that is dangerous to society because it allows the state without realizing it i don't blame the government for this i don't say this is their intention but what they do is lazily slip into uh, uh taking away freedoms because yeah. freedoms seem to be dangerous to everybody and that's the problem we've got of course it's a balance and the balance of risk is critical but we need to re-educate everybody that this balance of risk is there for a reason it's there because so much of what we do relies on us taking initiative. Yeah. And if our initiative is stifled, this economy 
is going to go down the tubes yeah. and everything else that relies on an economy. Including go the NHS. It, including the goes as well. Service, Can I just ask you, else. just finally and very briefly, um, G7 summit, um, all, all this uh, theatre of wearing masks in the fresh open air, uh, elbow bumping because of course you can't handshake or hug because of course, you know, coronavirus. Um, and then for all the official photographs. And then a few hours later, there they all are hugging, arms around each other, in each other's faces, uh, at a barbecue, not social distancing, no mask, sitting indoors without masks as well. You know as well as I do, if that was at a wedding, that venue would be closed down. If that was in a pub garden, that pub would lose its licence because those are the rules for the rest of us. But apparently it's OK when G7 summit leaders do it. Um, oh, and also, let's add in no self-isolating uh, for 10 days for these summit leaders because the virus doesn't affect people on diplomatic passports. Does this not prove to you that these are rules being made by people who no longer believe in them themselves? Who, who who don't follow them themselves, but just think that we, the plebs, stupid, ignorant voters, uh, are too stupid to make decisions for ourselves? Well, it is interesting, actually. I was looking at the G7, and your point is, of course, as usual, quite right. Uh, here we have uh, a group of uh, people who started uh, with a kind of posturing masks on and everything else. And as they got more relaxed, uh, they stopped all of that. And what they did was, they actually hit June the 21st for us and gave us a good demonstration of what June the 21st might look like. Yep. Uh, and I thought to myself, yeah, that's good. They're doing what we want to do on June the 21st and beyond, mm -hmm. uh, only to find the G7 ends, uh, but the 21st never ends. And so we have a problem. And the problem is politicians have got to recognize they took a decision there. And this is the point I make. They me measured the balance of risk to themselves and they decided that they were OK to do what they were doing. Why can't we have the freedom to do the same? Amen to that. Sir Ian Douglas-Smith, thank you very much.